Do you ever find yourself preoccupied with praise? Do you ever think to yourself that you've got it covered, that you have all the talent and skills you need to get by? Do you ever wonder how exactly to apply Bible lessons in your everyday life? Hey everybody, this is Steve, and God gives us gifts for a reason. In this week's Gospel reading, we see what happens after John the Baptist is arrested following the baptism of Jesus. And in this week's epistle reading, Paul describes the different spiritual gifts God gives us to bring us to maturity and fullness in Jesus Christ. Links to the readings are, as always, down in the doobly-doo. And don't forget that we've made intro videos for both Matthew's Gospel account and Paul's epistle to help you better understand the readings. This Sunday, we're celebrating the leave-taking of the Feast of Epiphany, or Theophany, when the Holy Trinity was made manifest during the baptism of Jesus Christ. Like we said back in episode 16, every great feast has both a time that leads us into the feast and a time for us to close our celebration. So two weeks ago, we observed the Sunday before Epiphany, and now we're observing the leave-taking of this great feast. An interesting thing about leave-takings is that we're no longer simply focusing on the feast. Instead, we're focusing on what we can take away from the liturgical celebration and live out in our everyday lives. It's a call to action. And there's a really beautiful call to action that connects the epistle and gospel readings we're covering this week. A call to progress from captivity to freedom. And we do that by using the gifts God gives us in the right way. In this week's reading from Ephesians, Paul begins with a paradoxical quote about Jesus. When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. Here, we're the captives, prisoners of something or someone, yet Christ doesn't treat us like we are. He doesn't punish us. He doesn't lock us up. Instead, when he ascends, we ascend with him. Though we begin as captives, we are liberated by Christ. We see a similar progression in this week's Gospel reading where Matthew quotes an important passage from the prophet Isaiah. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. By the way, when Isaiah talks about people sitting in darkness, he's not talking about people who are literally sitting in a dark place for no apparent reason. It's an expression in biblical Hebrew. Sitting in can mean living in. So Isaiah is describing people who live in darkness, who are held captive by the shadow of death. People who are freed when they see a great light. This movement from captivity to freedom is something that plays out several times in Scripture. When Isaiah describes where these people are sitting in darkness, some translations say that they're in the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali towards the sea. But a more accurate translation is something like the road to the sea or even the way of the sea. This is an echo of the Exodus, when God led Moses and the people of Israel through the Red Sea, leaving behind the slavery of Egypt on their way to the Promised Land. So we begin in darkness and captivity, and we're brought into light and freedom. And in freeing us, Christ gives us gifts, which Paul describes in his epistle. These gifts show the incredible variety and diversity in the church, as we're called to serve in different ways, because some of us are apostles, some are prophets, some are evangelists, some are pastors and teachers, because the purpose of these gifts is to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. This is a sort of summary of the larger story of salvation, and it's beautiful. We all start in darkness, in captivity, Yet Christ gives us these gifts so that we can all come to the unity of the faith and come to know Him, the Son of God. So as we close our celebration of the Epiphany, of the appearance of the Holy Trinity, we're left with this realization that incredible gifts have been placed in our hands and that we've been given these gifts for a reason. In the church, we're usually pretty good about accepting our gifts with gratitude. We realize, or at least we say we realize, that our intelligence, our strength, our wealth, everything we have comes from Christ. But when it comes down to it, sometimes we rely too much on ourselves and our gifts and forget the one who gave us this grace. Because when Jesus descended into the waters of the Jordan River, it wasn't so 
he could be made clean. It was so he could descend into our darkness and lift us up into the light of his heavenly kingdom. When he emerged from that water, it was so we could ascend with him, captives made free, given the gifts of grace so that we can all grow into mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. These gifts point back to him. They're designed to help us connect with him. And to make the most of them, we have to rely not on the gifts, but on the gift giver. We have to be humble enough to realize that no matter how smart or how strong we may think we are, there are problems we just can't find our way out of. I mean, remember that this week's gospel passage, which begins with these inspiring verses of light coming into the darkness, doesn't end with an affirmation. Jesus doesn't tell us that we've received the light and that we're good to go on our own. Instead, the passage ends with Christ preaching a phrase that should always be in our hearts. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is especially a reminder for me, doing work like this. If I'm not approaching this ministry prayerfully, with humility and repentance, then I'm doing it wrong. And these videos simply aren't worth watching. But when things truly work, when we are truly illumined, when we truly ascend with the Lord, that's because God, the giver of every good gift, is the one at work. When we do anything, especially ministry, in a spirit of self-reliance, when we pridefully assume that we can be saviors rather than let the real savior do his work, then we're sinking back into that darkness and captivity that God wants to free us from. Because it is God who is at work both in us and through us. And that's a lesson I, for one, really need to take to heart. We've covered a lot of ground today. And to help work through what this all means for each of us, we'll end, as we always do on Live the Word, with three questions. First, what are the gifts that God has given you? Maybe God has blessed you with the ability to teach or organize or lead. Maybe he's blessed you with patience or kindness or joy. There's nothing necessarily prideful about knowing your gifts. After all, if you want to use your gifts to serve Christ and his kingdom, you need to start by acknowledging what those gifts are. Second, do you exercise these gifts in a way that's centered on Christ? or something else? Do you start tasks with prayer, asking for the Lord's help? Do you celebrate successes by thanking the Lord for his grace? Or are you flying solo, following your own will, relying on your own self for your own glory? Third, what are some practices you can adopt to recenter your heart and rededicate your gifts to the one who gave them to you? Maybe instead of hopping right into a task, you can take a moment of rest, of silence, and simply sit with the Lord, trusting that he is with you and working through you. Maybe you need to be less preoccupied with the praise you get for your talents and more concerned with ways you can use those talents to benefit others and for the glory of God. We'll be back with a new episode on Monday. And my buddy Christian will have a short response video up on Thursday as he wrestles with these questions. I hope you will read the gospel and epistle passages we cover today. And whether it's with family or friends or a Bible study group, I hope you'll talk about what we've covered and wrestle with what God has for you in your life. Most importantly, I hope you'll celebrate with us this Sunday and every Sunday to hear the beautiful scripture readings proclaimed during the Divine Liturgy and to learn how you can live the Word. Thanks for watching. You can click on our logo to subscribe to our channel and make sure you turn on notifications by clicking the little bell so you never miss a video. You can find lots more from us, including ways to donate, at our website, y2am.org.